I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody. So I've been posting videos lately showing Windows 11 running on very low-end spec hardware or, or attempting to install Windows 11 on very low-end spec hardware, stuff that's way below the Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. But today I'm going to show you a little something different. In this video we're, we're going to install Windows 11 on this thing. Now at first when you look at that sticker you're seeing uh, AMD Athlon 64 processor. Uh, well that was a, that was originally a socket uh, 754 and uh, obviously that will not run Windows 11 as we tried in a previous video but we have a little something different in this system. In this system we have a Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 CPU and for our graphics we got this NVIDIA GeForce GTS 450 Fermi graphics card. So the, the uh, Core 2 Quad Q6600 is a very well known CPU from Intel that was released in 2007 and let's see how um, let's take a moment to see how this space heater can run Windows 11. Uh, we got a uh, what is that? 500, yeah, 500 gigabyte uh, Seagate hard drive in there. But, tucked away up inside here is, I believe, a 256 gigabyte SanDisk solid state drive. So, we got an SSD in this system. We got also, I believe, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM installed. So, we got a good bit of RAM. We got a good graphics card from way back. I want to say that's probably 2008, 2010, hard to guess. Um, that card is from. And of course, the graphics card itself is also a space heater and it's power hungry too. Um, it requires a six pan connection. And let's just say, um, this will be the first uh, setup to really stress that Dell OEM 350 watt power supply which that unit is actually made by light on and it's actually a unit that can put out I think 288 watts alone just in 12 volt power so it's up for the task I've actually pushed this thing really hard before running Furmark and yeah but uh aside uh, that side point let's go ahead and um, put this car back on and we're gonna actually do a clean installation of Windows 11 Pro on this thing okay so to start off, it is currently 79.2 degrees in this room. This room always runs a little bit warmer than the rest of the house. Uh, the computer plex has been running for just a little bit, but I can guarantee you with that Core 2 Quad Q6600 and GTS 450 graphics card working together as a space heater, we're going to definitely warm up a bit in this place. <laughs> so. When I wrap up this video tonight, I'm going to uh, show you guys the temperature when we're done. And I should also note the door is actually left open. So the air will probably come on us a little bit, but uh, yeah. Leaving the door open, let's see how hot it gets in here. Okay, I've got my uh, Windows 11 installer USB inserted. And I should go ahead and note that this USB was formatted with the uh, Rufus utility. Uh, which allows you to um, bypass the TPM checks and all that good stuff. Um, don't think it exactly matters when you're doing a clean install. I haven't actually tried it without doing the uh, modifications, but uh, there's multiple ways you can actually do that. But anyways, flash drive is inserted. Let's go ahead and restart this thing and get Windows 11 installed. And I guess the good thing to say about this system is I don't think we're going to be uh, watching paint dry too much because this is actually a pretty well performing machine. It'll just uh, about run you out. It'll get so it'll get so hot <laughs> in the room it's in. And the air has just come on. All right, what is the uh, key to press for boot options on this thing? 
F11. I swear some of them are F11, some of them are F8, some of them are F9. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just... So, uh, it, it's just a, it's just a look of the draw. So, the, our SSD there is a SanDisk Z400, which actually came out of a Dell system. That uh, SSD actually had a defective firmware, originally. Now, why is it not seeing our USB? Let's try a different port. There we are. Seeing this cruiser U. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and let this load up. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Select don't have a product key. Select one of the eleven pro. Accept the terms. Custom. All right. So this system, of course, uh, we have a second drive which has, which has data on it. Don't think it has anything important on it, but uh, nonetheless, we have a secondary drive. So this here is our SSD. Let's go ahead and delete the partitions off of it for one to seven. New and apply. Okay. All right, we're gonna select next and let this do its thing. Okay, since the air come on for a little bit, um, it has dropped the temperature down to 78.6. Now I just heard the thermostat click, so air is getting ready to cut off. So we're going to be down to about 78 or so. Okay, now we're in the uh, out of box experience setup, and you can hear this thing in the background. Uh, like I said, it's a space heater, for sure. Um, let's go ahead and run through this setup. And of course, uh, the Ethernet cable is disconnected. Turn that off. I do it every time. And you can see the desktop has 
popped up. We're still waiting on the taskbar. And we don't have a graphics driver just yet. So I'm going to hook this up to the internet and let it nail in drivers and stuff. And I'm sure it's going to really start heating the room up now. It does feel nice and warm back here behind the machine, that's for sure. We're still waiting on that taskbar. Okay, there's our taskbar. Okay, let's pull up File Explorer. Go fetch a couple of things real quick. Okay, so here is our uh, processor. It's a Core 2 Quad. Well, it's installing drivers now for a car graphics driver. Graphics card, rather. Alright, so we got a... Uh, again, Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 LGA775. Um, pretty decent processor for its time, ex except for the fact that it is absolutely a space heater. It's on the MSI G41M-P34 motherboard. 8 gigs of DDR3 memory. Our graphics is a GeForce GTS 450. And this thing, it runs, like I say, it, it runs nice and hot. Um, now, I'm not sure of the accuracy of some of these core temps, like for example on the uh, the, uh, the uh, Max there, because we have a really good heatsink fan on this thing, and I'll just put, go ahead and pop the cover off again, just uh, for an example. Um, now, one thing that is about the case is not, this particular case is not the best for airflow. I did this kind of as a sleeper build, to really be honest. I can say that the heat sink is definitely warm, for sure. Um, so it's just, like I say, it's just a hot running, definitely a hot running platform, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, another thing that's shown really odd here is saying the 12 volt rail is putting out 14.1 volts. I know that's a lie because I've I've actually used a voltmeter on this thing to check its total rail and it was about 11.7. This power flow unit actually tends to run a little low on its, uh, on its plus 12. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this, this particular, uh, processor, um, it's, I think, the thing, the thing what issues with is I have, over the years I have literally fought with it several times with, as far as dealing with temperatures. I've gone as far as to actually lap the IHS and I've used Arctic Silver 5 and all the good stuff and it's just, yeah, makes me come to the conclusion that it could be just the, the way that the uh, software interprets the sensor. I'm not sure about that, but uh, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, have a look around. So here is Windows 11 Pro. 21H2 running on a Core 2 Quad Q6600 processor. I got to go into settings and fix the time zone because, I mean, ever since uh, Windows 8, Microsoft has just assumed that all of its products, or at least all the computers that use its software products, are located on the west coast of the United States of America at a Pacific time. Because once you hook up to the internet, it always changes the time zone from wherever you are to Pacific. Maybe not for everybody it does this, but it's just it's just so annoying. 
Like, why can't we go back to the good old days of 107 where you set the time zone and now the box experience? How difficult is that, Microsoft? I mean, come on. You know, look at this crap. I, I, I go to this every time I do a Windows 11 setup, or Windows 10 setup, or Windows 8.1 setup, or Windows 8 setup. Any of those OS's, I gotta do this. But, um, anyways, that, that aside, um, let's go ahead and, uh, fetch the, wherever it is. Tell you what, every time I gotta, I gotta change this to compact, I can't stand it, how they've spaced everything out. So, it's, it's in the, uh, let's see here. PC Hill Check Setup, there we are. I'm gonna install that. That way we can see how this computer running Windows 11 pretty well. Um, how it doesn't meet the Elite Class requirements for, one, for uh, Windows 11. And the reason why I call them Elite Class requirements is because there's a lot of hardware out there that's well capable of running Windows 11 that's deemed incompatible because, oh, it's not an 8th Gen Intel Core or it's not a Ryzen 2000 series or later. There's a lot of hardware out there that's perfectly capable of running this OS really well. So here we see that's funny. Introducing Windows 11. Let's go and check see if this computer running Windows 11 is compatible with Windows 11. This PC must support Secure Boot. TP on 2.0 must be supported. The processor isn't currently supported. There is at least 4 gigs of RAM. The system disk is 64 gigs or larger. The processor has two or more cores, so... The stuff that really matters here, it meets those. But of course, that right there, that right there, and that right there, it doesn't meet the... I mean, the thing is... <laughs> it's like, come 2025, um, when Windows 10 support ends, what's Microsoft going to do when there's a lot of computers out there that are running Windows 10 that um, people are likely not going to just give up for a new system. Yeah, I, I do wonder what's going to happen come 2025. So, let's poke around a little bit here. Uh, it's getting late, so I'm going to kind of wrap this up pretty quick. But I did want to install Windows 11 on this just to see how it run. Oh yeah, let's see if Solitaire will load up on this system. Seems to load up just fine. You know, the last computer, that AMD E series uh, uh, E300, it would not load. So, really, to be honest, um, I don't actually use this. I just, if I mean, for anyone who likes the games, you can go online and actually download um, an installer. And I have it here in my files. And what it can do is um, you can actually install the Windows 7 games. So you can get something back from Windows 7. So let's run this installer real quick here. So what's funny is now, if we go into all apps, there's a now there's now a games folder, and we now have our classic Windows 7 games. For example, Minesweeper. So yeah, you can actually you can actually still install Windows 7 games. On Windows 11, I'm probably getting ready to hit a mine here. Nope. Nope. Bam. So in case you didn't know that, well, now you do. Um, now, of course, the package I have, I've had it on, I've, I've had it stored for quite a while now, so I don't have a link. Um, my suggestion is go on Google and look up. Um, just, just search one of those seven games and you should find at least one or two different installers out there for that. 
But, uh, yeah. So, so I'm going to do a restart here, and I don't have my phone with me. Um, I'm going to go get it so we can have a timer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a, uh, a uh, startup time, and this will not be fast startup. See if it tries to install updates, it's subject to do so. Well, maybe not this time. Okay. So, 29 seconds from um, startup to taskbar. So, let's say that's not terrible by any means. So, yeah, that's uh, Windows 11 running on a uh, Core 2 Quad Q6600. Now, I'm, like I mentioned, I'm not going to go into super deep stuff here, but. Uh, Really, just showing the OS running a few things. So I'm going to do a uh, matter of fact. I'll shut it off, and um, we'll do a startup using the uh, Windows Fast Startup and see how fast we can get it to boot it up this time. Okay, so this time. We're going to do a startup using fast startup. All right, so fast startup netted us about a ten second, uh, yeah, ten second faster startup time. So that's definitely not too bad. Uh, I can definitely say that, um, although the initial setup of everything may take a little bit, it may take a while, um, but I, I think I can say that the. Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600. Um, if you have a system with that processor, um, it would be a good candidate for a Windows 11 system. I mean, but as I've mentioned in a, um, a video in the past, I would not exactly suggest if you're like in the business of selling refurbished computers, um, even though Microsoft's Elite Class requirements do seem ridiculous. Um, I mean, in cases like that, I would not suggest selling a computer that does not meet those elite class requirements. Um, but for your own personal use, I mean, like, have at it. I mean, you know, like I like I mentioned, um, come 2025, um, when Windows 10 support is slated to end, Microsoft's going to have a decision to make because I mean, there's going to be a lot of computers out there still running Windows 10. I um, mean. To be honest, I think it might be a repeat of Windows XP. <laughs> because I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of holdouts sticking with Windows XP for many good reasons. And one of those reasons was its simple compatibility. Um, but when you think about it, the newer versions of Windows 10 are way more bloated and run slower on equivalent hardware 
than the um, original Windows 10 builds. Now I've done a video of this um, in the past and I'm planning on doing a second video similar to it comparing 1507 versus the latest one which I think is 21H2 or 22, yeah, yeah I think 21H2 is our current Windows 10 build that's out right now. So I'll be doing a video um, test running those two. Um, I'll start out with 1507 and then I'll install uh, the latest build and show difference in performance showing things like startup time and things like that. I may actually do this on the uh, the Trash AM2 system, that system that runs a Simpron 3600 plus CPU, but I may put a better hard disk drive in it just to make it run a little better. And for those who are wondering, the temperature really did not change too much in here. Um, thanks to the door being left open and of course the air come on two times throughout the course of the video. Um, which did help moderate temperatures and keep them a little, you know, basically not letting it get too hot in here. Now, had I closed the door, uh, maybe a different story. We'd be, we'd be cooking in here right now. Because let's face it, this thing, I mean, it does feel pretty warm back behind this thing, but it's not too bad right now, now that it's uh, kind of settled down. But if I was to fire up something intense, like Furmark, and get that graphics card really going, and that CPU going, <laughs> we'd have a um, a heck of a toaster oven or a, a space heater here because I mean that graphics card would be putting out a lot of heat, the processor would be dumping a lot of heat out, and that power supply would also be getting pretty warm too. I mean I've test I have I've pushed this thing pretty hard before, and I think I got a video up on YouTube of doing it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this thing definitely is a space heater. So. The space heater can run Windows 11 Pro. That is a Core 2 Quad system. Core 2 Quad Q6600 with the uh, GTS 450 Fermi graphics card running Windows 11 Pro. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well everybody, that wraps up for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel and be sure to tick that bell so you'll get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.